All right, what is happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another week of football, which means another week of prize picks and another week of a pick'em draft. I'm Tony No Dimes. That's Max the Animal. What's cracking? We already did a recap of last week, so if you don't know how week one unfolded for us, make sure you go check out that video. But this week, I'm up to nothing. Yes. That's the Tony recap we'll do. Tony hit his four square uh, last week, so he got two points. I hit nothing, so I get zero points. Whatever, you know. It's still it's, early. It's week one. We build from here. I'm not worried about it. Can't Tony. Be, can't be taking victory laps too soon. As last week's winner, you get to start us off with your two square for prize picks. My two square. Let's go with Michael Pittman to have more than 61 and a half receiving yards. Talked about this a little bit last week. I'm big on the Colts offense. I think it's only a matter of time before they start exploding, before they start racking up those yards. Matt Ryan's line moved a little bit. I want to say it moved about 10 yards. I thought about going back to the Matt Ryan well, but I'm not. I'm going to Michael Pittman because I think this boy is an elite wide receiver. I like it. 61 and a half, easy money. Also going to go with the Moore for Elijah Moore. He's going up against the Browns. Joe Flacco threw it 600 billion trillion times last week. <laughs> Crazy. And uh, I think it's, we're going to see a repeat of it. Maybe not that high, but I, I do think the Jets are going to be a pass-heavy offense, and I think Elijah Moore being their alpha receiver is going to be the biggest beneficiary of it. Uh, he was right around this line last week. Uh, I, I'm just feeling a boom week coming from Elijah Moore. Week two, to me, screams more. Elijah more, Moore. More. More, more. More, more, more. So that's my In two the square. In hour, she cried more, more, more. Who is that? More, more, more. What song is that? Uh, who is it? Who sings it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Did you just make that up? No, it's a real song. It's a rebel yell. That's Billy Idol. Billy Idol? Rebel yell. Billy Eilish. No, not Billy Idol. Hold on. Now I must know. It's definitely Billy Idol. I'm going to go with the less on Billy Idol. Yeah. Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. Damn. I was close. I knew that. All right. My two square? What's your two square? Are you ready for it? I'm ready. I took studs. Studs only? Studs only. I went with uh, Jonathan Taylor, more 99 and a half rushing yards. We're taking the more because it's Jonathan Taylor. He had 31 attempts last week. He went for 161 yards. And they're playing the Jaguars. So it's just, this is just a Jonathan Taylor. Like I, Jonathan Taylor. I could say it a million times, but I'm just going to keep saying it's Jonathan Taylor. He's going to run the ball a lot. 161 yards last week. 100 yards on the ground is in play for Jonathan Taylor every single week. The line can't move up or down. It has yeah. to stay at 99, and it's like, is this a coin flip of a chance that he goes into triple digits? If he on gets the 27 carries, 23, like this is going to happen. It's, yeah. it's one of those ones where there's going to be some weeks where, yeah, sure, it won't hit, but more often than not, I will take the more on this, and then for the second square. I'm going with Devontae Adams, 92 and a half receiving yards. More, because we're going with studs only. And look. Who do the, the Raiders play again? The Raiders are playing the Cardinals. Who okay. Defense did not look too great last week. Also, Devontae Adams looked like the only guy on the Raiders that really mattered. And as expected. Yeah, it was crazy how big of a backseat Hunter Renfro took. I was not expecting that. 10 catches for 141 yards last week for Mr. Devonta Adams. I think he's just a 100-yard guy. Like, he should be getting 100 yards receiving pretty much every week. Yeah, you know, there's going to be a couple weeks where he doesn't. But more often than not, he's going to go for more than 92 and a half receiving yards. So that's why I'm taking this. It's easy. It's I, simple. I think after week one, seeing Devonta Adams in a Raiders uni, any doubt that you might have had that he would, you know, regress statistically at least because of the quarterback no. downgrade, because of the increased competition in that offense. Those worries should be wiped away no, he's immediately. A, he's after he's a very one. good football player, and uh, he's going to get a lot of targets, and that's what you need. So, also, I, I kind of like um, I kind of like Josh McDaniels as a head coach. I mean, I he's an offensive minded right. coach. So I don't you know how would, many games he's going to win, but you offensively, would, you would hope it benefits you know the offensive players. So, yeah. All right, let's move on to the four squares. Uh, for my first square, I got Nick Chubb. We want to talk about studs. Nick Chubb, one of the best running backs in the NFL. I'm going more than 81 and a half rush yards against the Jets. The Jets' defensive line is not going to be able to stop anything that the Browns do on the ground. And I feel good about that one. Next one, Cordell Patterson to have more than 45 and a half rush yards against the Los Angeles Rams. I think the Los Angeles Rams beat the piss out of the Falcons this week. It is a worry of mine that Falcons offensively are going to get not a whole lot done. Almost nothing done. But I also think this is a low total for what seems to be a workhorse running back nowadays in the NFL. I mean, the Falcons have no other option but just to feed Cordy P, and they're going to continue doing that into week two. My third square is Davis Mills. I'm going to go more than 220 
passing yards against Denver. Denver's defense did not look sharp. Sorry, Animal. Against the Seahawks week one in prime time. It's okay. Houston also had, they might have been the most like up-tempo offense in week one. I think they might have had the most plays. Should have looked that up. Just kind of saw it on Twitter. Heard Listen, it we don't really look up like stats and numbers. At least I don't. I'm notorious for not caring about analysis and stats and numbers. You know why? Because I got instincts. I Go look, off your instincts. My instincts are saying this Houston offense is fast-paced. That's right. That's all you need. You don't need no number to tell you that. Also, Denver, we don't really know where they stand right now, but... They'll be able to put up points. I think this game could go into shootout territory. Davis Mills, more than 220 passing yards. And then my last one, last square, is a less. Got to throw one less in there, you know, because if you keep going with mores, you wear yourself down. It's like you really just don't have that many mores in the bank. You got to find some lesses that you like. And I like the less of Kenny Galladay, 31 and a half receiving yards. Look, this man stinks. This man's atrocious. He's getting paid so much money to be possibly the worst wide receiver in the NFL. He may catch a pass here or there. He may also not catch a pass, all right? 31 and a half, he ain't breaking it. I'm breaking this fucking entry. The cheat code of Kenny Galladay, less than 31 and a half receive yards. I looked at it. I almost took it, but yeah, no, it's a good line. All right, good. what you got? That's it. That was your fourth? That was my fourth. All right. I'm going to start us off with Michael Pittman Jr. Oh, for the record, these are all fantasy scores. I went for a four square fantasy score, fantasy square, whatever you want to call it. Interesting strategy. Yeah. Go Michael ahead. Pittman Jr., more than 16 fantasy points. This is a PPR format, so that's something important to remember. Michael Pittman had 27.1 points last week. Yay. And they're on. playing the Jaguars now, so this should be, you know, there should be points scored. Tyler Lockett. Less. Like you said, you got to throw a less in there, right? You need to change it up with your fastballs. Less than 13 fantasy points. We got Geno Smith throwing the ball. Yeah, he looked good for a couple of drives in the first half of week one against the undisciplined Denver Broncos team. But it's week two right now. He's got San Francisco 49ers who, coming off of a terrible loss, they're going to be motivated. They're going to get after it. Geno's going to be crushed. This line ain't happening. 13 less. It's a lock. Not even close. I'm not, this, I'm not even sweating this one. That's the one that's going to fuck me. <laughs> yeah. You, you, it was going to It was gonna go with you yeah. until you threw that last I line fucking, out there. Now, yeah, now to, it's like, all right, got to make sh- animal pay. I need to shut my mouth next time. All right. Third square. Jerry Judy, more than 14 fantasy points. More. More. More? More. Look, Damn. he had 20 points last week on a, and it's just an awful, awful offensive performance where there wasn't even a lot of opportunities. And I think they're just going to have a lot more. I think that Denver Broncos offense is going to come out and just look like a totally different offense for at least the first half. So Jerry Judy, I'm expecting big things from him this year. So we're sticking with the more on the 14 fantasy points. And then finalizing this, the fourth square, we're going bike to Devontae Adams with more than 22 fantasy points he is the guy in las vegas he is the wide receiver one he's Devonte adams he had 30.1 fantasy points last week so this is like one of those things where he gets his yards that he's going to get every week those 100 yards that i'm talking about and the touchdown that he deserves every week because it feels like he's going to be a touchdown a week kind of guy you know of course there's gonna be one or two where he doesn't this should be a uh, absolutely lock easy i'm going to come out on top next week as the champion. I'm not, I can't even say it confidently because I don't believe it. <laughs> I'm trying to like say it, but I don't believe it. So like, you know, good luck to you. Sir. These four squares are hard to hit. I know. It's hard. So hard. I feel like the best strategy is just really focusing on two squares, try to rack up as many single points as you can in any given week. But uh, putting a lot of stock in Devontae Adams this week, not a bad bet most weeks. Yeah, I mean, last week I'm putting stock in Austin Hooper, so I figure I might as well pick an actually, you know, <laughs> yeah. elite star-studded player. So It's a good strategy. Bet on good players. Yes. All right, so that'll do it for our prize pick entries this week. Go ahead, use promo code BDGE. But let's move on to the pick'em draft. <laughs> It's week two. We both finished two and three, so we are square even. And I say without further don't, let's just get started. Yeah, you're going to start us off. Uh, Yeah, I get the first pick this time. Reminder, you need a favorite underdog over under and a flex. So with the first pick. 30 seconds on the clock. With the first pick in the week two NFL Pick'em Draft, I'm going to take an over because the overs are what I am not confident on this week. Uh, No Monday night games. We're recording this on Thursday. We're not touching the Thursday night game either. 20 seconds. I'm going to go with the over in the Colts and Jaguars game of 45 and a half. Uh, That was the last time I saw it. Uh, 44 and a half. Oh, let's go. Love that. Love that we get that 45 number in there. I think the Colts were greatly disappointed to tie the fucking Texans. And the Jags obviously kind of lost a little bit of heartbreak. So 
I think this is a must-win situation for both. I think it's going to be competitive. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored. More than 44. Love it. First round pick in the books. All right. I'm going to take uh shit. This is my toughest one. I'm going to take an under because I believe it's the hardest one to find this week. I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way first. We're going to go with the Patriots and Steelers under 40 and a half. Um, you know, it's basically just one of those games where you got mediocre quarterback play and good defense is going at it. Hopefully you keep it to a low total. Uh, Mac we'll, Jones also we'll might be limited. Yeah. It's just one of those ones where I don't feel great about it, but it looks like it's the best option on the board. All right. It's a respectable pick. Uh, I'll tell you what, there wasn't a whole lot I was looking into that game. Probably could have waited on that game because I, I don't have a read on it. Well, I was just about the under. I don't know any other. I don't like any other unders. That's fair. But I, I just wasn't going to touch that game. I don't give a shit. All right. Well, now you can't. Now I definitely can't. I'm going to go. See, there's a lot of favorites. There's a lot of dogs I like. So do I go with an under because there's so many options on the board? Uh, No. And that's only because I, I think I'm going to have to punt the under spot because I'm clueless on the under this week. So I'm going to go with an underdog that I really like. Give me the Panthers catching one and a half points on the road in New York. They're barely even a dog. I have a money line bet with the Panthers. I just think that they are on paper the better team. Giants riding a high after winning a game that they really should not have won against the Titans. Panthers lose against the Browns. I think it's the Panthers' time. I like betting on 0 1 teams against 1 0 teams in week two. Yeah, McCaffrey, big game. Panthers plus one and a half. All right, love it. I'm going to go ahead and take the Los Angeles Rams minus 10 and a half as my, pick. as my favorite for the simple reason of the Atlanta Falcons are not a good team. They, you know, they come out to hot starts, but also Sean McVay with extra time is dangerous. This man's been plotting since Friday night, since Friday morning. So he's ready. The Rams are going to be ready, especially after getting smoked by the Bills. They're not going to have a, a close game with the Falcons. So uh, let's go with the 10 and a half for Los Angeles Rams. I really like that one. I mean, I've been talking about it. I feel like for all week now, since Monday, Rams, they're going to slaughter the Falcons. Uh, Let's see. I don't have a favorite. There are still a couple favorites that I like. I do need an under. Give me as a favorite. Where are lines been moving a little bit? Give me the Packers minus nine and a half against the Bears. Bears, man, fuck the Bears. Want to talk about undeserving wins? Bears capture one against the Niners. Packers get a little embarrassed by the Vikings. And we know that Aaron Rodgers in prior years have absolutely owned the Bears. It's Good choice of Lambeau. words. Good choice of words. I did that intentionally. Yes. He owns the Bears. Packers have something to prove. They have to embarrass the Bears the same way they were kind of embarrassed by the Vikings. So nine and a half. I feel like every year this game is early on in the season and the, the Packers are always laying nine and a half and I always make the mistake of taking Bears in the points because it seems like a lot. Not this year. I've learned my lesson. Not this year. I don't care if Devontae Adams isn't there anymore. Packers are figuring it out. All right, pretty dope. My next pick, I'm going to go with a dog, and I'm going to go with the Washington Commanders, plus one and a half. Barely a dog, but dog. still a dog. Uh, look, the line is telling me that, that Vegas thinks that the Commanders are better, seeing as how the Lions are at home and only one and a half point favorites. So, Commanders, look, they got Carson Wentz. Uh, he's the QB1. He's going to go out there and do his thing. I think they also just have a better defense. I think the Lions' defense is super, super uh, sus, as people would say. <laughs> as the kids would say today. <laughs> as the kids would say in today's world. So, yeah, we're going to lock in the Commanders plus one and a half as my dog. I really like that one. I, I was thinking about flexing that one before I even took an under. Just, I do not know what to do with these fucking unders that's why i got mine out of the way okay okay i'm going to go with a shit 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 oh my god i'm in a fucking pretzel right now dude 10 seconds all right here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna do i'm gonna hit hit, hit you with a flex i'm gonna go with another over this time me like this don't do me like this dog over 45 and a half houston texans denver broncos that's okay all right it's not like i wasn't it, it was an option but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I just talked about this, right? Am I taking crazy pills, or did I just mention this? Yeah, we, we talked about this a little bit in the Davis Mills uh, prize pick. More play. I think this has shootout potential, 45. Mediocre line. Love it. That's what my flex is. All right, pretty dope. I'm going to... Fuck, man. I need a flex and an over. I don't have them. You took the Jags game, right? From Colts? Yeah. Yes. What other over was I looking at? La, 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 la. Let's take a... Uh... Let's flex. Shit. I don't want to take the Monday night game, but I kind of want to. I know we had, like, the pack. Damn, you're already going to break the gentleman's agreement? There's no other bets. There's week, no other... week two, you're breaking the fucking agreement. I don't like agreement. any of the other one. I don't, uh, uh, what, was it a point of liking it or being respectful to the sport, to the draft, to this uh, fucking content? All right, let's flex the... Uh, 
I hate this. Let's just flex the Seahawks plus eight and a half. Damn, I hate that for you too. But you got it. You didn't take that game, right? No, no, that is that is all you. I think you're on the wrong side there. Similar to the Packers Bears situation, I think Niners got to come out and fuck up the Seahawks. Yeah, it was a panic pick. It was a huge panic pick. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. I mean, that was also your flex, wasn't it? Yeah, because I don't have an over right now because you took the only one I was interested in with the Colts. That's why I had to go one on one with it. Uh, it's a good pick. Fucking, you fucked me. You ruined me. You ruined me, dog. I love to hear that. All right, I only have an under spot left. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm taking the under of 44 and a half with the Bucks and the Saints. Damn. No sniping. Oh! Why? I have my over. I found it. Okay. All it right. wasn't that game. Uh, Yeah, I think, I mean, these are obviously two really good defenses. Bucks offense is banged up. I mean, literally all their wide receivers are like somewhat limited during practice. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of turnovers, at least from the Saints side. And, you know, I think historically these two just have really low scoring games. So early on in the season, I think these offenses aren't really up to their full potential. They're not rolling yet. 44 and a half. Give me the under. All right. So for my over, I was going to break the Monday Night Football Gentleman's Agreement to take the over in the Eagles and Vikings game. But I'm not going to do that because I'm a respectable person. Respectable gentleman. I'm a respectable gentleman. So I'm going to take the over in the Dolphins Ravens game. 44 nice. and a half. It's, like uh, you know, it's kind of a little it's a little bit of a low total, I think, for two teams that have pretty good offenses. Dolphins lo- looked pretty good last week. And the Ravens, I feel like I don't know if they played down to the Jets. Yeah, they beat them. They smoked them. But they didn't look great. So maybe you know, Mark Andrews gets a bounce back week going. They get some 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 yards going. They get some touchdowns going, and I get my over going. So I like that one a lot. I also like uh, Miami catching more than a field goal, but. I said this last week. I think Miami is still in play to be a really good over team throughout the season. Their offense looks sharp. Obviously, they didn't need to really, you know, run up the score against the Patriots who couldn't muster out anything. Ravens, also, we don't really know how healthy that backfield is. It's looking like J.K. Dobbins might play. But even if he does, we don't know if he's going to be at full health. Ravens probably still got to be slinging the rock because the round game is looking, as the kids say, sus. Sus. All right. right. That's the uh, second annual (laughs) week two pick them draft it is yeah we know how to we know how to count count annually (laughs) did i nail that fucking nailed it brother sick bro all right um let us know what you think whose draft are you riding with yeah also hey guys if you want you know in the comment section you could drop your you know one of each like your favorite your over your under your dog like you know do your own draft but you don't have to draft against anybody that gives you a little bit of an edge but you know Throw us, throw us your picks in there. I like the look. I like to sprinkle. Yeah. Use prize picks, promo code BDG. Get yourself a 100% deposit match bonus. And I think that's all we got. That's it. Uh, have a good football Sunday. And may your bets be on your side. May your bets come true. Bet, bet, bet.